It's time to sit back, turn on the radio. We've got stories to tell We've you, got stories to tell you, so let's go. You are listening to Johnny's Song, a 1920s-style radio hour drama written by D.C. Cathro and presented by Aralore NFT. Episode 7. Hello, mister. Welcome to the Carlton. Hey, kid. <laughs> Mr. Dewey. Didn't recognize me, huh, kid? That's right. What a suit. Oh, thanks, kid. Looked in the mirror and didn't recognize myself. You gonna open the door? Oh, sure. Sorry, Mr. Dewey. I just... Uh... What's up, kid? I wanted to thank you for being so nice to me. And for the buck. Oh, well, yeah, but... Mostly for being nice. Most folks don't even look at me. Yeah, these snooty types stick in my craw, too. Someday they'll get what's coming to them. Well, I guess I just wanted to tell you thanks. No sweat, John. See, you even know my name. Of course I do. It's just odd, you know? I'm used to being like... like a machine, almost. I always smile, open the door, carry bags. Folks just look right past me, like... I'm a, a lamppost. I've been there too, kid. Someday, though, you'll make something of yourself, and then they'll wish they'd paid attention. That's the way I sees it. What's that uh, old saying? Success is the best revenge. I've never heard that before. Well, truer words was never spoke. Now all you gotta do is go out there and succeed. <laughs> yes, sir. What do you do? Excuse me? What do you do? For work. Why do you ask? Well, my pa wants me to be a copper. <laughs> but I don't know if that's what I want to do. So I was just thinking about that. Ah, I gotcha. So, you know, you're such a nice guy and, and smart and you dress nice. So you must be, you must have a really great job. And maybe I could do what you do. You're trying to butter another buck out of me. <laughs> no, sir. I just wondered. I'm a businessman. I run a business. Huh. Gee, that sounds neat. What kind of business? None of your business. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. No, I'm uh, in the supply business. I buy supplies and uh, sell them to places that need them. I, I fill needs. Oh, that sounds like a big deal. Well, I ain't one to brag, but... Uh... So you work with lots of people? Nah, I, I try to specialize. Oh. The more people you work with, the more you gotta pay out. Right. Hey, maybe I could work for you someday then. Maybe. I already got your pa. I, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't think your pa would want you working for me. He's a pal. I think you should just go to cop school or whatever. Follow in your pa's footsteps. Uh... All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're a good kid. Thank you, sir. Here. Uh, oh, Mr. Dewey, I, I can't take another dollar. I didn't even light your cigarette. It ain't a dollar. Just take it, open the door, and say, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> See you around, kid. Five dollars? Five. Johnny, how many cigarettes did you light? I just opened the door. But we were talking a little. You shouldn't be doing anything that might... I, I was careful. I was just asking him about his job, how he makes his money, stuff like that. And? Well, uh... Well? He's a businessman. Where? I, I don't know. What kind of business? I, I don't know. What's it called? I don't know. I think you're right. You definitely shouldn't be a police officer. Very funny. Well, what did you find out? He said he's in some kind of supplies. He supplies folks with stuff. And before you ask, I don't know what he supplies, but... But? But my pa works for him. We knew that. Not really. It could have just been like they were pals, doing him a favor. But he said, I caught him saying that my pa works for him. 
so your pa has two jobs now. Okay, I mean, that's not a bad thing, right? Maybe. He's probably just trying to make some extra money. Well, then why don't Ma know about it? He never told her or me. Oh, oh dear. That can't be good, right? Well, it depends. Maybe, maybe he hasn't told because it's a secret. Maybe he's planning a big surprise. What kind of surprise? Maybe something for your birthday? I doubt that. It could be. He loves you, Johnny. Men aren't any good at saying it. Or showing it. Or, well, emotional expression. Emotional expression? But he cares about you. So whatever he's doing, I bet it's to help out your mom and you. Your family. Don't go jumping to conclusions just yet. All right. I won't. But I gotta figure this out. Johnny... I'm just going to keep trying to investigate. Think of it as copper training. But you don't want to be a copper. Well, I might not have a choice. I just worry. Well, I ain't climbing fire escapes. That's different. I'll be careful. I swear on a Bible, I'll be really, really careful. All right. Besides, my pa's a copper. He won't let anything happen to me. And maybe you're right. In case it is a big surprise, I'll be real careful so as I don't spoil it. All right, then. I promise, Del. Really careful. What could go wrong? Now, what did you have to go and say that for? And now, a message from our sponsors. Out of gas? Need a ride? Call on Fox's Taxi Cabs. We'll go out of our way to get you there in a flash. Fred? It's me, Ma. Oh. Johnny, I was hoping... What's wrong, Ma? I just thought it was your father. He's working so many hours and they have him going all over the city now. What about his regular beat? Well, there's a big case. He told me about it, but I'm not supposed to say anything. But Miss Clark told me she ran into him over by the Yorkshire. I suppose it's good that they've given him so much more responsibility, but... I worry about him. He's not sleeping well. He just seems so tired. Yeah, and all this here evidence. Yes. I don't know how he carries all these crates up all those flights. There sure are lots of them. Well, they must be important. Sure, Ma. Johnny, what's wrong? I guess I'm just worried about Pa, too. Oh, dear. I shouldn't have concerned you so. I'm sure it's all right. Once they crack this case, I have no doubt your father will be back on his beat and things will return to normal around here. I really hope so. Why, I'm just sure of it. Maybe we can even get the piano back up here. Oh. I mean, you know, once he's done with all these crates, maybe we could. Well, of course. But now that you mention it, I have something to tell you. Why don't we sit? Is something the matter? Oh, no, dear. Just the opposite. This is good news. We could sure use some. With all of these extra hours your pa has been working, he's been able to give me a few more dollars for, well, you know, household things. Uh Uh-huh. So I thought now might be a good time to tell you about your birthday present. Oh. That's right. Oh, Ma, you don't have to get me anything. You might change your mind once you hear. Okay. All right. I've gone and signed you up for those piano lessons. Ma! I looked all over town and found a very respected teacher, and I told him all about you, and he is very excited for you to start. Oh, Ma, that's swell. That might be the best present I think I ever got. You're so talented. I just... I just want you to be brilliant. Brilliant like all those lights on the marquee at the concert hall. Because one day... (laughs) Ma. It could happen. Well, I sure do hope. I do too. Now, you won't actually be starting until after your birthday because he's going to be in Europe. Oh, gee. (laughs) But as soon as he returns. I'm just so proud of you putting in so much work to practice at the club. And I am getting better. Of course you are. Uh, and, And Pa? I mean, maybe if he can finish with all these crates, we can bring the piano back up. So I can practice right here. He'll be able to hear me play. And I can try writing more. Johnny. Who knows? He might even change his mind. Darling, I... You think? Well, Johnny, I haven't told him. What? He... 
He doesn't know that I've signed you up for piano lessons. It will have to be our secret. Oh. At least just for now. He may come around, but... But this is just between us. Oh. Ma, maybe... Maybe I shouldn't. Shouldn't? But Johnny... Pa's working real hard, and he's... Well, it feels like it's taken a toll on him, and I don't want to do nothing that might make him feel worse or get mad. And don't get me wrong, I, I want this. I do. I want these lessons so bad I can barely stop from jumping up and down and, and hooting and hollering like, like a, like, well, like, I don't know what. But, Pa, and, and I don't want you lying to him on my account. So maybe... Oh, Johnny, my dear boy. I'm sorry, Ma. Darling. You mad? Mad? Not one bit. Johnny, you make me so proud. You're becoming quite a wonderful young man. And all I wanted was to give you something special. But you're right. Maybe I could get, I, I don't know, a, a bicycle or something? No, Johnny. I want you to have these lessons, and I'm going to figure out how to make this happen. If I have to tell Fred, then but I... But, Ma, I don't want you two fighting. Especially over me. Now stop. We won't fight. I'll just... Well, I will look for a good time to bring it up. I will tell him that it's all you want and that it's what I want to give to you. You think he'll listen? I can be convincing. But you're worried. At least it's two against one. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I could tell you he's worried? How? You didn't correct my English once since we sat down. <laughs> I suppose you know me so well. <laughs> If Pa says it's okay, thank you, Ma. Thank you so much. This really is the only thing in the world I want. Well, the only other thing. Other? I want you and Pa to be happy. And you too, my sweet boy. Boy? You said I was a wonderful young man. And you are. But you'll always, always, always be my sweet boy too. Oh, Ma. Why you gotta ruin everything by being so mushy? <laughs> mushy? I see. Maybe I'll just get you lessons with Mrs. Huffstetter instead. The church organist? No, thank you. I think it's a splendid idea and would certainly be a lot less expensive. Mrs. Huffstetter plays like she has toes on her hands. Well, maybe you should be nicer to me then. <laughs> okay, Ma. You be as mushy as you want. I certainly will. I just hope Pa doesn't... I know. But don't you fret. Yes, um, where is Pa? I, um, I s suppose he's still working. He was already gone when I left. I know. Wait. Ma, did Pa come home last night? Johnny. All night? And all day today? Now, I'm sure it's all right. I didn't want to worry you. I'm gonna go look for him. It, no, now you stay right here. I... I... he sent word that he's fine. Hopefully he'll be back soon. Sent word? Another officer stopped by to tell me and pick up some of these evidence crates. Oh. So... Uh, so, you go get cleaned up. You're dusty as sin. I'm going to start dinner and you can help. Yes, ma'am. And Johnny? It's going to be all right. I promise you. Okay. Now... Go wash up. Yes, Ma. <sighs> oh, dear. Thank you for listening to Episode 7 of Johnny Song, featuring Jacob Albert Gross as Johnny, Amanda Tossman as Della, John Glimpf as Dewey, and Brianna Galligan as Clara. Johnny Song was created, produced, and funded by Aralore NFT. For more information about our art, storytelling, and in-real-life events, visit aralore.io.